Welcome back to the channel family and another broadcast. My name is Paul. I'm in Peter Edding, Scotland. Very pleased to be here. Um, I don't know how many of my listeners keep abreast of the uh, the news, particularly with uh, surrounding Israel and the Middle East at the present time. Uh, but on the channel, I do like to give occasional updates, particularly for persons that, uh, for whatever reason, don't keep an eye on such matters. Um, so if anyone's not aware, on October the 7th, 2023, there was a brutal invasion uh, an act of war by the Hamas government in Gaza uh, against Israel, and uh, they broke into Israel, invaded Israel, and they brutally, brutally slaughtered men, women, and children. They raped uh, women and children. Uh, they beheaded them, disemboweled them, tortured them, burned them alive, chopped them to pieces, mutilated and uh, desecrated their bodies. Uh, over 1,400 persons living in the south of Israel, and they took... Uh, about 240 persons hostage back into Gaza uh, for a terrifying ordeal. And um, so Israel rightly retaliated and uh, sought to extirpate and do away with the wicked Mohammedans that were responsible for such things, the enemies of Israel. And since then, there's been uh, an onslaught of, uh, of Israel against uh, the wicked Mohammedans in the south of Israel. Um, and uh, so matters are ongoing in that region. Israel now has control of uh, the majority of what's known as Gaza, which is really south of Israel, uh, south Israel, south of Jerusalem, I should say. And um, and of course, uh, the the world is a cup of bewilderment. Is Jerusalem uh, the world, the nations, and mankind is made to stagger? concerning the Jews and the matter of Israel and the nations are drunken um, with the matter of Jerusalem and Israel. And really what, what happened was, was uh, out of the thousand things I could say, friends, basically there was the Balfour Declaration in the early 20th century, which was largely a British movement to re-establish the Jews in their ancient homeland of Israel. Uh, and then what happened was, was Britain uh, kowtowed to some Muslims in the region uh, and they gave uh, a large part of what is really Israel to to a Muslim king, uh, and uh, he named it Jordan. And the country that's now Jordan, um, that was part of what was supposed to be Israel and is, in fact, Israel. Uh, and then, of course, uh, other parts to the south uh, also were supposed to be Israel. So basically, Britain betrayed the Jews by giving away large parts of Israel uh, to her enemies, to the uh, the Muslim nations uh, that hate the Jews, you know. And so um, what's going on at the present time is there's uh, persons uh, protesting and uh, saying, oh, Israel's in the wrong. But of course, Israel was completely at peace with Gaza before October the 7th, before uh, the wicked Mohammedans in the south of Israel uh, perpetrated an act of war against Israel. So on the screen, friends, I'm just going to zoom in. And of course, God rules the planet physically through the United States Army, uh, which is which is the most powerful army on the planet. Um, and America has aerial supremacy in that region. Uh, well, in every region, pretty much. Um, so we will zoom in a little bit, friends, into the Middle East on the screen, if you care to look at the map. Now, you can see Britain up there to the top left. Uh, and you can see uh, Russia to the top right. Uh, and then if, if you look in roughly the middle of the screen, you can just about see Israel just underneath Syria and just above Egypt. Um, so, yeah. Um, what's going on at the present time is uh, Egypt. None of those surrounding countries want the Muslims that are known as Palestinians. Uh, because for for a long, long time, those those persons that are now known as Palestinians have been travelling troublemakers, rabble rousers, and whatever country them and their ancestors have been in, they've caused trouble. And that's why Egypt won't let them into their country. You know, it's like the elephant in the room. Uh, nobody's talking about why Egypt won't let them into their vast, vast country. A comparatively wealthy and successful nation. Why they won't let them in? You know, if they, if they want to flee, that's what that's the unspoken elephant in the room. Uh, and of course, same as Saudi Arabia. 
they don't want the Palestinians in their country. Oh, no. There's no chance. Same with Libya and Sudan and Algeria. Uh, they don't want the Palestinians there. Oh, no. Jordan. Jordan doesn't want them. Iraq doesn't want them. Syria doesn't want them. Turkey doesn't want them, and nor does Iran. You know, the stark reality is that the vast majority of those persons known as Palestinians are murderous and hateful with evil intentions towards living humans who have not done them any ill at all. That's, that's the reality of the matter. Um... So at the present time, friends, speaking geopolitically and militarily, um, largely uh, France, uh, United States of America and Britain and Australia and, and uh, Germany support Israel in their campaign to extirpate the wicked Mohammedans known as Hamas and their terrorist uh, employees uh, from that region. Um and wickedness is wickedness, you know. Um, the old saying in America is uh, only a good guy with a gun can stop a bad guy with a gun, you know. Uh, and I, I've mentioned on the channel before that uh, over the last uh, few few number of decades, the, the Palestinians have managed to lobby international governments uh, to, to and by playing victim. Uh, they've managed to weasel out hundreds and hundreds of millions, in fact, billions um, of, of cash from governments into that region. Um, so what's known as Gaza should be like a holiday resort. It should have the very best of health care, the very best of transportation, the very best of clean streets, uh, full sewage, clean running water for everyone, uh, probably free health care. Gaza should be a model nation with all the money that's gone into it. And again, this is the elephant in the room. It's, it's similar to, to, to the Africa problem. Massive quantities of cash has been poured into Africa over, over a generation by, by what's known as first world nations. And it's largely been, been uh, trousered, been pocketed by, by ungodly leaders in Africa. You know, and, and very much in the same way in Gaza, but much more so in Gaza, the, in terms of the quantity of cash and the and, and the, the the minute size of Gaza. I believe it's about thirty miles by three miles wide, and um, two million people in it. So it's it's a comparatively small piece of land, uh, geographically speaking, and the quantity of cash, friends. I'm not exaggerating. Many hundreds of millions of pounds has been given to Gaza by the international community. And uh, this is not being talked about, you know, and what's happened is the, you know, probably a small percentage of it even has been used to create hundreds of miles of tunnels underneath Gaza. Uh, vast militarization of the wicked Muslims in that uh, short space there in, in, in Gaza. Um, and the vast majority of it has gone into the trousers of these uh, these wicked leaders um, of Muslim extremist organisations, and most of them don't even live in Gaza. They live in the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Turkey, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's what's gone on financially. Now, in terms of regional geopolitics, as I've said, the other elephant in the room is none of these countries want the Palestinians in their country, they won't let them in, even though they're all Muslim nations. If you look at the map, friends, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Morocco, Sudan, uh, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, Jordan, Iraq, Iran, largely Syria, all of Turkey, um, all of Pakistan, all of Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, they're all, if you look at the screen, friends, they're all Muslim countries but they don't want any of the Palestinians in their countries. That's the reality of it. Now, um, what's gone on in recent days is uh, um, some... What's, what's really been going on is Iran, which is a massive oil-producing nation uh, that makes a lot of money, 
Um, that is very much a Muslim country. That is to say, uh, the uh, the Muslim mullahs, the Muslim leaders, are in charge. They control the government, you know. And there is a, a government, but it's controlled by the Muslim religious leaders. You see, whereas Turkey is quite different. Turkey is a secular government made up of Muslims, um, so it's a different sort of setup. Um, Whereas places like Jordan and Saudi Arabia, they have like um, sheikhs and kings and things like that. It's a different different kind of setup in those countries. But Iran, which is in the middle of the screen, uh, is and has been funding uh, massively um, wicked Muslims in Lebanon and Syria um, and Yemen and um, Gaza. Um, for decades with all kinds of munitions, everything from drones to intercontinental ballistic missiles to all kinds of weaponry and intelligence and finance and, and wages, money, you see, to attack Israel. And so what's been going on in recent weeks is uh, wicked Muslims in Yemen, which is just beneath the centre of the screen, friends, They've been firing bombs at Israel and also at international shipping. <clears throat> now, if you look on the screen, friends, we'll just zoom in a little bit further. You can just about see Israel there, just above centre. You see the Red Sea. And then you can see Yemen and Eritrea, and it appears on the screen a very tiny gap between those countries, but it's actually 25 miles or so wide. Um, but if you're firing bombs, it, that's not a very wide stretch of water, you know. And what's going on is wicked Muslims in Yemen are firing bombs at international shipping. Now, international shipping, uh, these ships carry such vast quantities of goods um, that, that if one of them can't move, you know, it's a massive amount of money that's involved, you know, uh, without getting into the world of commerce, but Every, you know, the quantities of goods that these ships carry, friends, you know, I don't know if any of my listeners have seen them, but these vast quantities. Uh, now, someone owns all that, those things. Uh, some factory somewhere produced all those things that pay wages. Those colossal ships that carry thousands and thousands of tons of goods cost a fortune to insure, staff and maintain. Um, and then, of course, there's someone somewhere that's buying all the goods. Um, so, and then there's all the various taxes and taxation of these ships and the wages and all this. So, so what's happening is, is these wicked Muslims, they know that if they want to get the attention of the world, all they need to do is attack the pocket, attack the finances of the world. And that's what's been happening there. They're, uh, they've commandeered a couple of ships. They've attempted to commandeer other ships. Um, they're firing bombs. And they're even firing bombs towards the U.S., uh, Navy in that region and things like this. So Britain uh, and America um, have, have attacked Yemen on a number of occasions in the last few weeks and bombed some of their infrastructure. <clears throat> so that's what's that's the practical thing on the ground that's going on in terms of uh, geo-military realities. And of course, Iran has been threatening Israel every day for decades, you know, um, and uh, Hezbollah, which is a, a massive organization of wicked Muslims in uh, in Lebanon, which is just to the north of Israel, <clears throat> just underneath Syria. If you look at the map, friends, it's a much bigger organization than Hamas. They are not getting involved mercifully because they know that Israel will, will bomb them sky high if they do. Um, so basically, Iran has been has militarized and financed and encouraged wicked Muslims uh, in Gaza, Yemen, uh, and Lebanon, and Egypt to, to attack Israel now for many, many years. That's, that's what's been going on and continues to go on. And one of the prime reasons for this assault on uh, this invasion, this act of war on October the 7th, 2023, <clears throat> was that Israel was about to sign something called the Abraham Accords, which was a peace treaty uh, with Saudi Arabia and other Muslim nations in the region, which would have definitely given some stability to Israel. Uh, 
and uh, mercifully some of it still stands in terms of peace agreements um, but it would have been uh, definitely not what the, the enemies of Israel wanted you know it would have meant a measure of peace and stability in that region and it was something that had been worked on for several years and it was about to be signed and ratified by Saudi Arabia and other nations um, and so Iran definitely didn't want that. Um, and they knew that if there was an attack on Israel, that Israel would respond very strongly, as they have. Uh, and Iran knew that that would, to some degree, serve their purpose in terms of uh, the world being horrified at Israel's response. You know, so, you know, um, so all these things are quite complex geopolitical realities, friends, or so it seems. Um, but they contain some very simple features. Basically, the wicked Muslims hate the, the Jews, the elect, uh, the children of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and are trying to attack them and distress them. But what happens is the earth, as in Revelation 12, opens its mouth and helps the woman, the Jews, um, and swallows up all the vile bile and hatred of the hissing serpent, the fleeing monster the monster that the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Israel, the King of the Jews, the head of every man, the Lord of glory, the Son of God. The Son of God at this moment is every man, woman and child upon this orb, living and dead. Christ is every atom, neutron, proton, macron and nuclei. Christ is everything, everyone, everywhere, except the doomed, deluded demons. They are destroyed. So. Um, it is spoken of in scripture that God is able to turn his enemies against each other. When a man's ways please Yahweh, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So all these promises to individual Christians find their perfect and complete entirety in Christ Jesus, friends, you see. So because Christ is a man of God's counsels, Jehovah's fellow, uh, all God's promises to Christ are perfectly fulfilled, you see. So because there is a Jewish man that's come out of the tomb, gone up, gone in, sat down, you see, uh, God is able to sovereignly and willing to sovereignly fulfill all his promises by way of the finished work of eternal redemption. So, um, yes, so that's a very brief uh, attempt to, to explain what's going on. So, that, that you know, there's lots of... Uh, um, um, political intrigue and basically the nations are drunken concerning and they stagger around <coughs> Jerusalem's a cup of bewilderment to uh, deluded nations you see um, and God God is sovereign over all flesh you know? uh, all there is on this planet is the will of God that's all there is You know, all there is is Christ and the saints anyone that's not part of Christ and the saints is lost all there is is the Lord Jesus Christ and his wife. Anyone that's not part of his wife is lost. That's it. Right, friends. Um, I think that was all I really wanted to say. So so things proceed. Israel continues to uh, extirpate the wicked Mohammedans from the south of Israel and uh, to bring in righteousness in that region and peace, uh, which is what they had before the act of war on October 7th. Um, and basically the sovereignty of God is at play. And one feature I will mention just to show to you, friends, the very simple reality of the entire sovereignty of God, God uh, Yahweh Elohim, the creator. Um, the name of the prime minister of Israel is ben Yamin Netan Yahu. Well, Yahu is the name of God. Yahu. Yahu. Yahweh, 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 Jehovah. Yahweh, Yahu. Yahweh, you see. So Ben Yamin, it means son of Jah's right hand, the son of Jehovah's right hand. That's what Benjamin means. So the son of Jehovah's right hand, Netan, is the Hebrew word for gift, and Yahu is God. So the son of Jehovah's right hand, the gift of Yahu, the gift of God. So in other words, Christ rules all nations, uh, all kingdoms, all mortals. All mortals, all mortals are simply the hand of Yahweh, friends, the wicked his sword. Mortals are like grasshoppers. The nations are like drops in a bucket. 
So every human that has or will ever live uh, in terms of after the curse and the fall and uh, before the imminent physical resurrection of hundreds of millions of true Christians that were to be clothed with physical immortality, that period of time, um, every one of them um, is simply the hand of God. Everything was taken in-house, as it were. All mortals are simply the hand of Yahovah, the wicked, his sword. Um, <clears throat> so there we have it, friends. The son of Jehovah's right hand, the gift of Yahweh, Christ rules as king of Israel. All flesh will bow to a Jewish man. All nations, all humans will serve, honor and obey a Jewish man. No. Okay, so today, friends, we are in the 11th chapter of Zechariah. A wonderful chapter it is too. Um, yeah, so this is this one is actually quite a, a deep chapter. Um, the whole of scripture is about the revelation of the Son of God, the revelation of Elohim, Yehovah, to understand the heart and the mind, the whole counsels and the purposes of God in Christ. Um, various, uh, the five books of Psalms, show forth uh, converse in the Godhead between the Father and the Son discourse. So if you want to know more about the Father and the Son, of course, the Gospels, uh, God incarnate gives great revelation of the Father and the Son. Jesus said, for example, uh, nobody knows the Son except the Father. And nobody knows the Father except the Son. And those to whom the Son is pleased to make him known. I am my father, a one. He that has seen me has seen the father. Now, if you go to the five books of Psalms, friends, there you can learn uh, about the conversation between Christ Jesus and God his father, the mystery of the Godhead. Some of the great themes of the Apostle Paul's writings are uh, the head in heaven, the body on earth, Christ and the church, Christ and his bride. The deity of Christ, the fact that Christ is God. Um, the mystery of works and law. Um, by works of the flesh shall, by works of the law shall no flesh be justified. It is by grace you are saved through faith. Um, and also uh, the, the mystery of the Godhead the deity of Christ. These are some of the great themes of, of the Apostle Paul. And of course, God used the Apostle Paul to write almost half the New Testament. Now, this chapter is rather in depth. Um, many of the uh, prophets give great insight into Christ and his people and uh, the sovereignty of God, the great purposes of Elohim, Yahweh. So, this one is quite a deep chapter, I have to say. Let's get straight into it, friends, and go ahead and read it. Uh, Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. Howl, Cypress, for the cedar is fallen, because the noble ones are spoiled. Howl, ye oaks of Bashan, for the strong forest is come down. A voice of howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled, a voice of roaring of young lions. For the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Thus says Jehovah my God, feed the flock of slaughter. Feed the flock of slaughter. Whose possessors slay them without being held guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be Yahweh, Baruch be Yahweh. For I am become rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the earth, saith Yahweh. And behold, I will deliver men, every one into his neighbor's hand, and into the hand of his king. And they shall smite the land, and I will not deliver out of their hand. 
So I fed the flock of slaughter, truly the poor of the flock, and I took unto me two staves, the one I called beauty, and the other I called bands, and I fed the flock. And I destroyed three shepherds in one month, and my soul was vexed with them, and their soul also loathed me. And I said, I will not feed you. That which dieth, let it die. And that which perisheth, let it perish. And let them which are left eat every one the flesh of another. I took my staff beauty and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant which I had made with all the peoples. And it was broken in that day, and so the poor of the flock that gave heed to me knew that it was the Yehovah, the word of Yehovah the Lord. And I said to them, if you think good, give me my hire, and if not, forbear. And they weighed for my hire thirty silver pieces. They weighed for my hire thirty silver pieces. And Yahweh said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at by them. And I took the thirty silver pieces, and I cast them to the potter in the house of Yahweh. And I cut asunder my other staff bands to break the brotherhood between Yudah and and Yashrael. And Yahweh said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For behold, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, who shall not visit those that are about to perish, neither shall seek that which is strayed away, nor heal that which is wounded, nor feed that which is sound. But he will eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their hoops in pieces. Woe to the worthless shepherd that leaves the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye utterly darkened. Yes, so open your doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. God's ways are higher than men's ways, friends. Um, now, men are often spoken of as trees in Scripture, uh, and this of, often has to do with uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, it often has to do with the tree of life. And of course, everything centers in Christ Jesus. Christ is the has the first place, the preeminence in all things. So... Um, men are often spoken of as trees in scripture as well. So um, not so much mountains. Mountains tend to be the father and the son. Um, and uh, also um, you have the mountain of the daughter of Zion. Mankind itself is spoken of somewhat in metaphorical terms as being a mountain. You can read that in Isaiah 16, uh, the mountain of the daughter of Judah. Um, and of course in, in Zechariah 6 you have the two mountains of brass which is the father and the son and then in Daniel 2 you have the stone cut out of the mountain without hands that comes into the world becomes a great mountain and fills the whole planet which is the Lord Jesus Christ God incarnate uh, and, and other such scriptures and now Jerusalem is called the holy mountain the city of truth a couple of chapters ago in Zechariah so that's, it's very interesting conflict, but trees are almost always persons, um, and everything has to do with the cross as well. When you see the trees, it's, it has to do with the cross. So, um, so when open your doors, Lebanon, that the fire may devour your cedars, that speaks of the enemies of Israel. Now, uh, at the present time, the only enemies of Israel in Lebanon are the wicked Muslims that are paid to be there by other wicked Muslims. That's reality. Um, 
you know, when we speak of Iran supporting and um, militarizing persons in the south of Israel, in Egypt, in Yemen, uh, in uh, Syria uh, and in Lebanon uh, and in Jordan and elsewhere, um, and even in parts of Jerusalem, um, we also mean that they pay the money. You know, they can't live there without any money. You know, they're there as uh, as being really part of the army of Iran, you see. Um, now, so so when it when when God says, "Open your doors that the fire may devour your cedars," that's talking about God destroying the enemies of Israel that are in Lebanon. That's precisely what that means. Howl cypress. That's another type of tree, for the cedar is fallen. Uh, the noble ones are spoiled. So, the noble persons that do live in those places. Uh, that want to do what's right, they don't have any much say because of the wicked Muslims in those places uh, that breathe out violence and are there to threaten violence towards persons living at peace in Israel, you see. So the noble persons upon the earth in places, and there will be some noble persons in the south of Israel, in no place known as Gaza, of course there will, um, and noble persons in most, if not all, the countries on the planet. But in terms of the Middle East, the noble persons in in, in Iran, for example, um, and in Yemen, um, and in Gaza, and in Lebanon and Egypt, uh, and Saudi Arabia and other places, they do not, in the round, they do not have full sway and control of those countries because of wickedness because of wicked, hateful, murderous Muslims um, that breathe out violence and threats towards persons living at peace. See? So um, that, that's why Muslim extremism flourishes uh, in what's called mosques throughout Britain and, and other countries, because the nominal, the... Uh, marginal the the peaceful muslims and the majority of muslims are peaceful um there there's a culture of fear they're scared of the extremist muslims in their mosque you know and one of the issues with islam well the, the main issues with islam is the quran is full of violence and hatred and murder towards the jews uh it's also full of the repression and control and domination of women uh, the Muslim writings also uh, condone uh, paedophilia, sex with children. Muslims uh, practice more marital violence and child molestation in Muslim homes than in white Christian or nominal Christian homes by a long way. And the Quran also teaches that wherever a Muslim is, he's to install, he's to install the House of Islam. Yes, I had a call come in then, friends. Um, so the point is the complete sovereignty of the Lord, the greatness of Yahweh. I believe I was speaking about uh, how noble persons, uh, because of the proliferation of the works of the devil in terms of hatred of the Jews, uh, in countries where there are a lot of righteous persons, uh, because of Muslim extremism, Muslim fanaticism, and ultimately the wickedness of Muhammad, um, that's recorded in the Quran and other uh, writings. Um, there is prescribed all kinds of wickedness and oppression against the Jews, um, which now is, uh, I think, I think there's over one and a half billion Muslims, professing Muslims on the planet, mercifully. Very few of them are faithful to the Quran, otherwise there'd be mass bloodshed tomorrow. Uh, one of the unusual features of belief systems is that most of the adherents are backslidden and false professors. That's one of the great ironies of things like the superstitious cult of Roman Catholicism, um, the cult of Jehovah's Witnesses, the cult of Mohammedanism, Islam. Um, you know, the, the persons in them, the majority of them are backslidden and they're false professors. They profess that belief system, but in truth, they don't adhere to the tenets, uh, which is a mercy. Um, it's a mercy. Um, Yes, yes, yes. And, um, you know, for example, um, 
a little known fact by modern day professing Catholics is the Roman Catholic Church is an absolute monster. It's the ancient lumbering Antichrist. It's responsible for the torture and brutalization of several thousand men and women in the Middle Ages in the Inquisitions. The Roman Catholic system has never publicly apologized for the gross atrocities throughout Europe, Britain, and even here in the north of Scotland that it perpetrated, the wicked popes perpetrated against anyone that wouldn't bow down to the Pope of Rome, the Antichrist, a man who sees himself as another Christ in place of Christ, that wouldn't bow down to the superstitious idolatries of paganism, um, uh, talking to the dead, bowing down to statues, all the uh, various wickednesses and false teachings of the so-called Church of Rome. Uh, the atrocities of the Inquisitions in South America and Europe in the Middle Ages were very, very, very gross friends. And uh, the Roman Catholic Church has done its best in the succeeding centuries to sweep it under the carpet. But God requires that which is past. My point is, is uh, if, if you have persons that had adhere to religious cults, um, you know, and they were to faithfully obey the tenets of those cults, uh, then you would see uh, terrible things happening, as we saw when uh, the Roman Catholic system had sway over Britain and Scotland, terrible, terrible oppressions of persons that wouldn't bow down to the Catholic faith. They were brutalised and tortured and starved and beaten. They had all their properties taken off them and possessed by the Roman Catholic system, one of the reasons why it's one of the wealthiest organisations. The Roman Catholic system is the lumbering antichrist throughout the centuries. It's really the continuation of empirical Rome, the emperors of Rome, um, uh, exercising a spiritual and temporal influence. Um, the emperors of Rome, they saw they couldn't continue their uh, geopolitical uh, control as in control of countries because, as with all empires, they couldn't supply the men at the front line, they couldn't keep the supply lines going to faraway lands to maintain their their colonisation. So that's why the Roman Empire ceased. That's why all empires cease. They physically can't maintain their supply lines to their men in those countries to, to run those countries. That's why Britain no longer rules India, uh, for example. Why Britain no longer rules Australia, etc., etc., etc. Um yeah, so um, so what happened was was the emperors of Rome, they Christianized uh, and they then began to exert temporal influence and thereby control of nations by so-called spiritual means, uh, and they mixed together paganism um, um, with uh, with Christianity, and they came up with things like Easter, which is an anagram of Astarte, which is a false god, and Christ Mass. Uh, uh, you know, and, and other such festivals, other such inventions. Anyway, I digress. The point is, is um, that, that through these uh, belief systems, righteous persons often cannot take a stand for what's right. And we certainly saw that during the Middle Ages, where righteous persons in Britain and Scotland and Europe, mainland Europe, were unable to bear sway because of uh, religious... Uh, religious uh, rigour because of uh, wickedness, you see. So the noble ones were spoiled uh, because of other persons. The strong forest has come down. The shepherds howl, their glory is spoiled. A voice of roaring of young lions, the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Um, so what we're reading about here is the concerns of shepherds. Now, shepherds would protect and nourish and rear young sheep, and all the sheep would protect and nourish all the sheep. Their glory is spoiled, the voice of roaring of young lions. So what that's talking about is, is uh, a threat to God's children. Uh, the pride of Jordan, well, Jordan in Scripture symbolizes death. It's Yarden. Um, and so where the pride of Jordan is spoiled, what that means is, is the devil's pleasure in death, because the devil is to do with death, you see. 
the devil is to do with death and oppression and fear and delusion. And so the devil takes pleasure in wickedness. You say he's a murderer. Uh, well, the pride of Jordan is spoiled. So in other words, any satisfaction that uh, sit, sit is an English word that means to satisfy. You eat a meal and you feel sated. Um, or I'm even satisfied. We get the word satisfied from sit. Um, well, the devil is satisfied at wickedness, at murder and wickedness, you see. Well, the devil's pleasure in death has been removed. So it really is talking about the finished work of Christ, you see. Well, this whole chapter is about Christ uh, and the relationship between God the Father and God the Son. That's what you're reading about in this next verse is, Thus says Yahweh, my Elohim, feed the flock of slaughter. And of course, we know that uh, the Lord Jesus said, My flesh is food and my blood is drink indeed. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. For my flesh is food and my blood is drink indeed. And we have here Yahweh, the Father God, saying to the Son, feed the flock of slaughter. Now, the flock of slaughter is an awful description of all mankind. Because everyone uh, who has ever lived uh, has been under the sentence of death. Christ vicariously uh, took the sentence of death, took the penalty, the fury of the wrath of God completely 2,000 years ago and was able to feed the flock of slaughter. So that means uh, God's provision of Christ for mankind Literally, the, the agonies, the holy sufferings, the flesh and blood of Jesus offered as a atoning vicarious, uh, once for all sacrifice, bringing in everlasting righteousness, uh, bringing in everlasting joy and everlasting gladness, everlasting peace. Uh, it's the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ, a very precious thing and unique. You don't get that anywhere else in scripture. Thus says the Lord my God, feed the flock of slaughter. All mankind is described as being the flock of slaughter. It's basically all the offspring of that first woman being under this in terms of being under the sentence of death. Well, friends, we will be back soon with another broadcast. Uh, until then, stay in the scripture in the truth. Um, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. El Elohi, Yahovah is everything, everyone, everywhere. Everyone lives and moves and has their being in Yahweh. Um, so rejoice in the truth. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, truth and peace with those that call upon Yahweh out of a pure heart. And remember, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you could ask or even think. <laughs>